your girl father long legs you know me daddy t this is you can tell me anything the podcast where comedians confess something they want to get off their chest i'm really excited for my guest today she's so funny i can't believe i haven't had her on already i've we like been tweeting back and forth for a while um because i haven't seen you in a minute because of the pandemic yeah. and i was like i i can't believe i haven't had you on yet <laughs> she's the host of long story longer on sirius s sirius x m please welcome lisa curry hey thank you so much for having me yeah, thanks for doing this. I want to share a tweet of yours that made me laugh. I think you know which one it is because mm-hmm. I already <laughs> I already retweeted it. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> but I really enjoyed this, and honestly, I think it's not getting the credit it deserves. Um, Lisa Curry, <laughs> which is at, at Lisa underscore Curry on Twitter, said, What if Earth is getting hotter from the inside? And I then mean... you, like, followed it up because it's full of molten lava. And that... It made me laugh so much and I was like why is this not viral <laughs> you know I, th- I feel like like I definitely thought of that when I was high but I'm like you know if you plant this seed of an idea in the wrong brain this is going to be the next big conspiracy in the country is oh people are going to be like global warming isn't real what's happening is it's heating from the inside which I'm like if you really if you really melt your brain around I'm like well that doesn't seem illogical yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem entire like if you're if you're not you know, too familiar with earth earth science, and that's all you know is like the Earth's core is hot as fuck. Like that m- makes sense. <laughs> it, I mean, it also like c- like it's interesting. Well, first of all, I also read it high, and I just <laughs> did not even consider that until you said that just now. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's true. Maybe that's why I found it so hilarious. But right now, I'm not high, and I still like it. Um, I have heard the theory that like the universe mirrors us, in, not in a like literal. Um, like you know like oh there's the star that's me but Mm -hmm. just the way like the energy field moves so there there may be more like quantum like sort of long time from now discovery to it but I like things that feel sort of true but also are too far for us to prove so that's why that tweet tickled me because it was like oh thanks it it may be on the track to something like discovery thousands of years from now like that yeah you know look I can't disprove it Right, but it's so. obviously not going to change anything if we just yeah. think that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I also like to start this pod with a good confession, which is not really a like confession, it's more like a humble brag icebreaker, it could just be like Ooh. a sentence, just to start on a positive note as a way to get to know you. Um, for our listeners, um, I already know you, but um, well, I can always get to know you more, so... <laughs> Can you tell I have not taken my ADHD meds today? All right. Um, <laughs> is there something good you'd like to confess? And it could be just um, anything positive, basically like something you like, some cool achievement you've done, or you want to shout someone out, anything that's just like not negative. You know what? It's like a two, it's a two layered thing because like part of it, the second part is like a, a not a brag. It's like a pat, no, you're allowed patting to brag. myself this on the back. This is literally the space for it. Uh, <laughs> well, during lockdown, um, so I used to work at this restaurant uh, for a few years, and there was this, uh, we'll say, very, very well-off couple that would come in, and they were older and just so sweet and gay, and don't like I say that because they like never had any kids, didn't mm-hmm. adopt anything. They were just like moving full steam ahead with their. Uh, with their career and during lockdown for 10 months they sent me a grand a month just like out of nowhere and they were like hey like the guy emailed me and asked for my email or he called me and asked for my email address or my address listen my brain's not on it (laughs) uh so he asked for my address and then just like as a surprise he was like hey we just want to help because we know you're not working right now which was really nice and then like I know. I'm like that was that got me through that. I mean, ten grand in a year. That's a yeah, fucking, wow. that's a lot, you know. And it's um, nice that they connected to you too, because it shows like sometimes people like obviously as comedians like mm-hmm. we do side jobs like waitressing or whatever. But yeah. To take everything you do um, seriously, even when you're it's not your main thing. Like clearly, yeah. you did a great job, and they felt connected to you. Otherwise, they wouldn't yeah. have like singled you out. You know. It's also like, you know, part of what was hard about waiting tables in LA is like. If you were to ever say like, oh, yeah, I'm a comedian, they're like, mm, sure you are. <laughs> and in it's it was so nice and validating to have 
this couple that was like, we really believe in you to the point that we want to give you money so you can keep doing this. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Give me their number. Um, I'm just kidding. (laughs) No kidding. (laughs) I'm like, I'm going to be moving in with you guys now. So (laughs) hope you have that extra room ready. Um, And then in like, uh, because that feels so good in the, also in the middle of lockdown, I had, I mean, getting staffed on Jim Jeffries' show is what launched me out of restaurant work because it's like you go from making just barely enough to survive to making what I still think is a fucking fortune, Mm. Um, even just like staff writer. So the following year in 2020, in the middle of the year, out of no, I I didn't know what to expect as far as residuals go. And Mm. I got a lot of money in residuals. And so I just started like Venmoing friends money, like... Listen, I probably should have paid off like one more card, but I just like started Venmoing people money because I'm like, everybody's fucking struggling and it feels so good to be on the other side of that, you know? That's awesome. Um, I love that. And you're I was getting like a grand too. a month too. Huh? Oh, wow. No, I love that you're like returning the favor because I think that's literally like the, you know, I don't know if it's like a, I think it's sort of a Buddhist teaching, but generally that sort of karmic thing. But it's like we hear it all the time, but it's, sometimes we just forget that if you just practice it it does really come back like when you get yeah. something and you give it back it just oh completely. and it keeps happening you know yeah um, it was um i don't know that felt really good i mean it feels weird to say but it, all, it also i'm like please please guys give me jobs because i will give everyone money <laughs> like this is i think it, i have you, a pretty low you overhead job, I'm fine. you were was it the night of or was the week i remember we talked about it at the public house right yes <laughs> that yeah the awful show i mean it's, it wasn't awful but it was just it was you know a grind um yeah. but not because of the comedians there but just it yeah was so weird it was or the booker show. everybody's great the venue's yeah. great uh you um, know everybody everybody's great individually <laughs> no but i remember i, I think that was the job right when you you were like yeah getting to the point where you're like i'm so frustrated and then you're like oh and then you got it and it was like oh my god it's so exciting yeah because i remember curtis cook was on that show and he was on the staff at jim jeffrey's show and i believe it was the next day i was starting work with him and i didn't say anything to him um so it was just and i love curtis so that was fun to just like show up in the office and be like what's up it's me (laughs) oh i love that um, yeah, yeah th- that you kind of inc- uh, inspire me to share this. This is like, because I think it's true. We don't really like, I, I say the good confession thing because I want people to brag, but I don't do it myself. But um, this one was kind of like a weird one for me, but I'm like in the spirit of kind of like putting it out there so more people will do this kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, I I like had, I got my boobs done. Um, it was a long story, which I'll probably write a show about at some point, but mm-hmm. it a lot of it had to do with like my heart surgery as a baby, but also cause I just am vain and wanted nicer boobs. Yeah. And I got them after I had like a shitty thing happen and like, like lost my job, but I did get a little bit of like money that probably should have been saved away. But because <laughs> I wanted to like put mm-hmm. it towards something like, I just felt like I was like, if I'm going to come out of this with anything, I want it to be something someone can't take away. So I did yeah. that. But then at the same time, I was also feeling like a little guilty, you know, because I'm like, this is so vain and stupid. So then after I got my boobs done, I um, I was like, I want to donate to someone's top surgery. And I asked um, a friend of mine if, who was really connected to a lot of the GoFundMes if they mm-hmm. knew anyone who was looking. And they sent me a um, page and I like donated <laughs> like basically that I like did a really stupid like thing for myself where I was like okay the amount of cc's I got I'm gonna times that by 100 and give that so I oh boy. like a little like about 1500 whoa well, I won't say the exact whoa, number that's because so I, generous. Then you won't know my cc's but uh <laughs> <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I gave them um uh a donation to that and that was like my little way of in that spirit sort of like I yeah. just wanted to give, and also I feel like it's bo- getting your boobs done as a cis woman is so different from getting top surgery. But mm-hmm. in terms of like going through just like the procedure and the money, and it's a huge thing. And I wanted to sort of give back in a way that felt less selfish. And so it, it seems weird that. to say because it's so it still, still sounds selfish saying it, but it feels so <laughs> it feels weird. But like also, if you're not one of those people that's like, anyway, so I donated this and I gave this and I'm like, I would never say who I gave money to mm-hmm. because I'm like, I don't want that to be like a weird yeah. thing. It would just be like somebody tweet like, hey, I'm fucking having a hard time, whatever. And I'm like, here you go. You know, um, which it's like, realistically, it's not like I'm hoping it like made their day brighter. I'm like, I wasn't giving enough people money to pay fucking rent, you know? Yeah. But that, I think that's the point is we like, especially in comedians, like 
we've all struggled and I think it's really good practice to be giving back in small amounts mm-hmm. uh, not to say that you know rich expensive billionaires shouldn't give a lot of money but sometimes those all galas, <laughs> yeah but like sometimes the spirit of those do seem like <laughs> A little performative like they're donating one mm-hmm. percent of their income but they're like it is obviously a lot but they just they want so much more credit versus just practicing constantly like being in connection with your community yeah. you know yeah it's not really how much you give i think it's the percentage of th- th- i'm saying that like really matters it's it's morally if that's yeah it's not the right term but it's like how much of what you have do you give or how much of like what percentage you know because it's different like you know you giving fifteen hundred dollars is flow like yeah exactly if you were like uh you know i don't know why this is the image that popped in my head but like uh, you know in those like 90s movies where there's like the abandoned house on the corner with the like witch who never leaves it's like if you Mm -hmm. lived in a house like that and you never had guests over but then once a year you had a huge party it's like fine but like also it'd be just nice if you just sometimes went over to your neighbor's house and sometimes have people over like to me it's like yeah you don't have to like it's not like a contest it's more just like be a part of the community you're in you know yeah absolutely um well i, I love uh, that totally okay agree. sorry thanks did i cut you off no no i was just saying i agree with you <laughs> well speaking of, of community i do um this is before we get to your confession i do like to ask mm-hmm. my guests like because this podcast was sort of inspired by me going to therapy and realizing like how nice it was to just be able to talk and so have no judgment mm-hmm. so I like to ask my guests like do you go to therapy what's your experience with it or if not like what's your sort of like self-care routine when you need to you know have a confidant um I used to go to therapy and I miss it so much I ju- <laughs> I'm not going now because I did de- I had my WGA health insurance ran out unfortunately so if somebody wants to hire me that'd be <laughs> fucking great I've got six million uh writing samples <laughs> <laughs> um that ran out and it's like even like better help and talk space are like 360 dollars a month that's their that's their oh, lowest because it's like 80 bucks a week or 90 bucks a week for one session which is like that's not that's not much as far as therapy goes but then when you're looking at 400 bucks a week I'm like if I had 400 bucks a week I wouldn't have a car that's about to break down okay Um, (laughs) or 400 bucks a month you know um yeah I didn't uh, know that I've heard of those and I was I haven't like looked too much into it because but I'm I was curious about that that's that's good yeah it's um Hi. I had I had a breakdown at one. I was like messaging back and forth with a woman uh, or a representative, whatever, uh, from one of them, and I was like, "How are you guys? How how are you in con- good conscience, like saying that this is affordable when it's still four hundred dollars a month for your for the cheapest package?" I'm like, "Come on." Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, because you would um, think they well, whatever. I'm not even gonna open that Pandora's box of how to. Um, oh yeah, it's so frustrating. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Um, I do. I am lucky that I got a good psychiatrist uh, towards the end of my health insurance, and so I'm on what I call brain pills, uh, which has helped me. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like a light mood stabilizer. It's not very much. Um, I'm on, on. yeah, I I got on SSRs during pandemic too. And for a while, it's like as much as I would talk to people who like are on them and like are like this changed my life. It's it's scary to start something. And it's terrifying. I was like, I don't want to fucking just take meds indefinitely for the rest of my life. But it has completely changed my life Mm -hmm. and my habits and my work. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. But um, to answer your question, I, I... I think for mental health, for me, it's a lot of a lot of working out, a lot mm-hmm. of being outdoors, uh, journaling, and uh, talking to. There's like a couple friends of mine who are who've gone through different twelve step programs, who've gone through different versions of therapy, and not that that makes up for things, but I'm like the the friends I'm thinking of like have they know my entire history, they mm-hmm. know, um, you know my own bad habits um and they're very aware of my own bad thoughts and so those people like I'll check in with and they really it it really helps and I'm like yeah I know that they don't have a degree they're not like a therapist but uh also it's like to some extent it's like they're better than the last two therapists I had which Mm -hmm. were two cuckoo people um so (laughs) no I mean every everything you do is important I mean I I can sense because I do the same thing too sometimes where I'm like 
in, I, I was in and out of therapy and that sometimes I'd just take breaks or be on the road or feel mm-hmm. like I didn't need it. And I'd always justify, but, or I'd always say like, oh, don't worry, I've done it. But the reality is like, there's no right way or co- should, like you have to do anything. So I think it sounds like you have a very healthy awareness of like what you need and how to get those needs met. And I mean, having friends is a really big part of getting support. And it's yeah. just some people don't start off having that comfort level with friends. So it's it's great that you do. So. Yeah, I maybe like overshare a little bit because <laughs> I'm like, I'll tell anyone anything, whatever. <laughs> well, then you're on the right podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get your confession. And we're back. All right, Lisa, the time has come. Is there anything you'd like to tell me? Yes, there is. Um, I do not have, well, I technically earned, but I do not possess a high school diploma. Ooh, okay. Oh, this is interesting. We've had, we've had variations of this type of thing, Ooh. but I'm so curious because mm-hmm. there's a, always a lens to a very interesting story, especially when it comes to finding your way into performing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I want to unpack that more. Uh, was this something, did you drop out or I, if there's a specific story to it, I, I'll no, you oh, yeah. on it. But. I, um, well, what happened is uh, I'm, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 15, and things were chaotic. And my parents weren't – they were having a really tough time. Mm, gotcha. And, Where did I you mean, grow like, up? northwest Indiana, okay. like in rural Indiana, like an hour out of Chicago. And, I, I mean, I used to put a lot of blame on my parents, and now I'm like, oh, they lost their business. They lost mm. – we, ha- we owned a marina for a while, and so my parents lost, like, close to a million dollars. Oh, yeah. um, and we weren't – millionaires all we had was the business and we were like making enough to live and then they lost it and so we lost everything it was it was fucked up and they were like they weren't present um Mm -hmm. and i don't i don't fault them for that but that was the reality and they uh, were doing the best i mean this is like the therapy right yeah exactly i've had similar like journeys with like blaming my parents and then kind of working through it yeah it's like I used to be so angry at them, and now I'm like, oh, they were my age. Like, mm. can you can you fucking imagine losing one million dollars right now? I like, and that's, but it's not even like a fluid. It's not even like liquid a million dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, like tied up. I mean, that's that's the wild thing is like it's okay to be angry to have been mm-hmm. angry because that's the circumstances. But. Mm-hmm. There's different yeah, because it was anger a child, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, like blaming and anger is different. Because I, I, yeah, sometimes I used to feel guilty for being angry that I didn't get what I needed. But now I'm like, uh-huh. well, I'm not blaming them. It was at the time I didn't. I also didn't have a way to do it. But now I've built up my own way to get what I need, and mm-hmm. nobody's, you know, at fault or I'm not holding the grudge. But totally, and it's like I feel like once you start reaching the age your parents were when they did the things that you were upset with them for, you're like, oh, I have so much compassion for them. Mm -hmm. Like, if I lost $200 right now, I'd be uh, (laughs) so mad. Uh (laughs) I I wouldn't be functioning. (laughs) Um, But so they, like, weren't really present, and I took full advantage of that. And um, I've, I've, I'm, I have great handwriting. I'm a good artist. Uh, Uh I am very good at forging signatures. Um, And so, like, I mean, all, all of high school, I did ditch a lot, especially mm-hmm. like my senior year. I think I wasn't in high school. I, I don't think I went to a single full week of school in gotcha. uh, my senior year because, again, I lived an hour out of Chicago. A friend of mine was working at the Schubert Theater downtown Chicago. He had graduated oh, wow. a year ahead of me. And so I would just like it would get to like third period. And I'm like, I cannot I cannot stand being here. Like, I fucking <laughs> hate this. I don't I love to learn. And I still have like some of my college textbooks. And I like perhaps read them from time to time uh, to brush up on things and maybe that's super dorky but uh, but I would like write myself a permission slip and go downtown Chicago uh, and just like leave and go to a show and go to musicals with my friend or go to the art museum which is like it's not it's kind of it's really the nerdiest way to very wholesome like (laughs) I mean, I'm like, I don't like give a fuck about algebra. A lot to take in culture. It's like <laughs> yeah, the most wholesome exactly. version of ditching school. Like, exactly. Like, art um, is my drugs. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I would like, I would do that. And then I kind of just took it a step further. And my uh, junior year going into my senior year, 
uh, the drama department was going on a trip to New York City to do. They were, we were there for a week and saw a bunch of music. I wasn't even in like the the fucking weird thing was in my school the drama kids were the cool kids because okay. I think because like the girl soccer coach was also like he had been in a McDonald's commercial so he thought he was hot <laughs> shit or whatever and that's all he okay. talked like the t- number of times we saw him bite that cheeseburger is obscene. That's so funny, <laughs> but, but he. So the drama department was going, I wasn't in with the cool kids, so I wasn't, uh-huh. like, in drama or in any of the stuff. Uh, so it was, like, the school but, of high school musical. Like, what Ashley, T- yeah. what Ashley Tisdale is, like, she exactly. was cool, right? I don't know. I, that, I, I'm <laughs> assuming. <laughs> she seems cool just uh-huh. generally. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, but they were going and taking, like, some acting intensives and stuff. And, by the way, this was June 2001, not to give you guys my exact oh, wow. age. Uh, okay, but so yeah, go right, very before. important year. Uh, yeah, I have a picture, like a panoramic picture from the plane of the Twin Towers. Oh my gosh. Fucking That's weird. That's surreal. Um, oh, but, so I went on that trip. I did not ask my parents permission. I Wait, just signed you, all you the paperwork. You said you moved out of that, uh, by then? or Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was, so at that point, I think I was living with... I lived with my brother for a while, and then I lived with my grandparents. So I think oh, gotcha. okay. I think by then I was living with my my grandparents. I was for sure. Um, so I <laughs> like I just didn't mention it to my parents. I was like, <sighs> but like my headspace wasn't like, ooh, I'm gonna get away with something. My headspace was like. I want to go on this trip. Mm -hmm. Um, No one's going to stop me. And it's none of their business because I don't even live with them. Like, that was (laughs) was my thought. You're very, like, not not comfortable is not the right word, but, like, um... Uh, like you possess a lot of like what's the word like yeah self you're very self possessed like because I feel like at that age I would be really scared like it sounded like it wasn't coming from a place of you want to do something bad or like you know like push the boundaries it sounded like you want to do this and you were Mm -hmm. coming at it from a very like pragmatic approach like you know obviously as a parent that could be scary to hear like your child just signing permission slips but it seems like you were just like parenting yourself right I mean I totally was and also I think I was emboldened because like I was always an honor student and like in Mm -hmm. all these extracurriculars and shit and my two older brothers who are much older than me were like when they were teenagers they were like getting arrested they were stealing cars like they didn't they would steal uh-huh. a car and then drive it across town and leave it somewhere else just like for a goof. Like a so I, I I feel like that's a different sure. that's different yeah, than yeah. like stealing a car, you know, for whatever. So I'm like, oh well is They were doing like, fun crimes. Not, yeah, they're getting bad grades and people crimes. getting arrested. So yeah, who cares? <laughs> yeah, we should differentiate fun crimes in the court system, you know. Some are like Thank I did you. that because it was Thank fun you. and I got in trouble. And then there's some that's like I did that because I wanted to hurt people. That, yeah, it's like I didn't hurt anyone, I didn't destroy property. Leave me yeah. alone. So who gives a fuck? <laughs> I forged my parents' signature to leave the state. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you like were surrounded by like at least like it's not like because it's like you were surrounded by people who shared your values and you were able to trust them because I don't think this is a dig at you but more the world like that mm-hmm. as a child could have put you in a very dangerous position I yeah think, you know? oh yeah like, oh I'm gonna cross state lines and you know just go on a field trip but it's like oh I could also disappear <laughs> it's like, yeah it's like also I wasn't filling my parents in on any of this. <laughs> So who knows where I'm at? I think at the last minute, my parents knew I was going to New York, but they didn't know that they were going to receive a bill for it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And then like during my senior year, oh wait, no, that same summer, I think. Maybe it was that same summer. Wait, the school just bills you? I guess I don't really know. Like back in the day, I I feel like I'm- Yeah, they would just send bills. Like I had already signed up for it. I'm already going. So they sent bills to the house that my parents- I think they may have paid like one or two, but then they're like, what is this? So they just stopped paying them. And then I also signed up for, uh, they offered a college course. They offered a marine biology course. And so I did that as well. And that was, we like learned to scuba dive in Indiana and some like murky fucking lake. (laughs) Yo, it was the best. And we went down to, it was like, I think that was in the summer as well. We went down to Key Largo for a week and did like an intensive where we were like in the classroom all day like in and out of the classroom and then we would go out and dive and like we dove shipwrecks we like saw all these and it was so fucking cool oh my gosh i want to go to school in indiana (laughs) right (laughs) (laughs) that was another trip that i also forged my parents signature for that and i was just like fuck it i'm going i don't 
care how this gets paid for because I don't I'm also like a teenager and I don't understand like how broke my parents are I don't understand you know money (laughs) really at all I still don't I don't want to you're like the um did you watch that inventing Anna Anna Delvey story on Netflix I she is a personal hero (laughs) like but I mean like in your version you're not like hurting as many people but literally you're just like I'm gonna do things that I enjoy and I don't care if I can't pay for them and it's like yeah yeah man like you know out in nature before jobs and 401ks existed you could just dive into the water for free like <laughs> exactly. we should have these exactly. experiences thank you, you. Know? <laughs> uh, but because of those two trips and because my parents didn't finish paying for them that's why i don't have a diploma because like i i graduated and i walked across the stage but when i walked across the stage they handed me like a you know a leather bound thing like everyone else yeah, and I sat down in my seat, and I was like, ooh, my diploma. And I I opened it, and it was like, you owe X amount of dollars. I was like, cool, cool, cool. And I just, like, shut it really oh quick. I was like. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> they put in a bill. The <laughs> bill. So and then I fucking. Twisted. Like, yeah, so I have a leather-bound <laughs> bill. <laughs> That's almost like they're, like they're like, we don't know how to get this to your parents, so we're going to sneak it in. Like, it's like getting served papers. Like, yeah, you exactly. They would just get, tell you to come to the office later and give it to you. <laughs> yeah, joke's on them because my dad didn't come to my graduation. So, <laughs> so who am I going to hand it off to? That's so wild. Oh, my gosh. Well, I feel like that honorarily you got the diploma. And, in fact, you went out of your way to learn more. Like, exactly. You be Thank you so much. A I have a different diploma. education. Yeah. yeah so, who gives a fuck that I don't know algebra two? It, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I would never use it in my life. As a matter of fact, if somebody, if I needed to use it, I would just be like, pass. I'll just stay in this yeah. problem. And that also, I'm in. I feel like what's more important as an adult, we realize that like you have everything you need to learn those things like obviously as a kid like we're told like you have to do this class you have to get this grade but like the fact that you weren't skipping school to do nothing you were skipping school Mm -hmm. to actually like probably use your brain more i would say like (laughs) as an adult like if you really had to learn algebra 2 or whatever you 100 percent could do it like there's no question because you figured out how to sneak to new york as a 15 year old (laughs) I like I was also really good at math, but I was like, I don't want what I wanted to go into was uh, politics initially. Ooh, okay, um, okay uh, I, I could see yeah. that. Yeah, I definitely I could see that with the um, sort of like making things work, but also not telling the whole truth. But then at the end, it's good for everyone. Right. I bet yes. my parents are proud now. They're like, look at her. Look at all the experiences yeah. she got. And we, they didn't have to pay. So yeah. in some way, you well, could help them also, out. And also, it kind of was this caveat for my adult life where I just travel a lot Mm -hmm. now I went I mean also sophomore year of high school I went to China with my aunt which was like a different she sucks oh no that was a different thing but now I'm like I've just kind of like up and gone on trips like my uh friend Kate was backpacking around for like for several months and I want to say this was like 2015 Mm -hmm. maybe 2014 and uh she's like hey I'm gonna be in these countries on these dates if you want to meet me and I was like great bet I'll be there and I love it took it was like the week before the first of the, it was like the last week of the month and I took my rent money and booked a trip to go meet her in Indonesia so I had and I had like a full day layover in Shanghai so I like ran around Shanghai by myself for 18 hours or whatever um both ways and then like I just I sublet my apartment out on Airbnb for the month and I was over there with her for two weeks and then I came back and crashed on Brandy Posey's couch for two weeks and I was like Psh- worth it you know like <laughs> i love it it's wild because i like as much as i've like run into you in comedy i i never heard this side of your life and um just to give you some context i feel like the universe is saying like we had to have this conversation now because i've <laughs> I literally been thinking i mean i just booked tickets to do a tour like to go into chicago and leave from atlanta for two weeks uh-huh. in april may but i'm in the boat where i'm like i should be trying to lock down a full-time job but i'm freelance writing enough where i'm like i don't want to do like a side job but I also, if I don't do it at all, I'm fucked. But basically, I, like, I'm like i like, I'll figure it out later. And just this morning, I was thinking, like, maybe I will mm-hmm. um, just rent out my place for a month because then I don't have to figure out rent and I'll be gone for do two it. weeks anyways and camp my way around for this tour. Do it. And talking to you, like, I think I'm like 99.9% there now. Like, this, my, this conversation my first is helping. Two, <laughs> <laughs> my first two years in my studio apartment, I think I was in – collectively, I think I was in my apartment for five months in two years because I was like, 
I went on the road. I lost my job. So I started to like, I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go on the road. I didn't have, I wasn't making, I wasn't headlining clubs. Mm -hmm. I was splitting Mm -hmm. a show with two other comics where we're each doing 20 minutes. So I'm like, well, I'll sublet out my place. That's almost all of my overhead. Yeah. Um, And actually the first, I want to say the first year I sublet it, my rent was a grand or 1100 and I was subletting it through Airbnb for eighteen hundred a month, so it was so covering like almost all of my expenses. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, what? And also, like, I, I feel like sometimes I'll start to get scared again because, like, you know, as you get older, you like get just become more cautious, and then I'm like, oh wait a second, nothing fucking matters. None of this matters <laughs> it, it, at all. Yeah, and you know how to look out for yourself. I think the important thing is to learn those lessons. Like, I, I had a hard time learning how to just like let myself skate close to empty Mm -hmm. and it's like I'll panic before I'm even at empty you know and it's like the reality is like I'm getting anxious that I will have nothing but if I'm wasting the last bit of my like let's say I really run out of everything and have to move home if I waste the last month of my freedom um freaking out then I'm wasting it so it took me a while to train myself to be like hey like I'll take care of myself but until I'm at zero I really shouldn't be spending time like freaking out I could I could spend time like you know doing things that might help me get away from there but not like panicking yeah no I I uh I totally get that and if it's any comfort like granted I was panicked this whole time oh so I left um sorry I'm like uh, jumping all over the place but in April 2019 I had kept getting like really close to getting out of restaurant work and I was finally like at the beginning of 2019 I'm like I'm quitting in April. I'm never. I'm not doing this anymore. I fucking hate it. I can't do it for. I don't care what happens. It, this just isn't going to be it. So there's this festival that I do in Wales every year, and so I booked. I booked this like two month tour of Europe. I which by the way, start. I started booking in January for May and June. It's f- f- so much work, but wow, worth yeah. it. So I was like over there for two months. I recorded my album and all this other. I did all festivals and whatever shit. And then from there, I went to New York for two months. By the time I got to New York, and now here's another thing. When I travel, money isn't real. So I'm not like, (laughs) there's no such thing as like traveling on a budget for me. I'm like, yeah, I'll have a $200 steak. Who gives a shit? Whatever. I'm traveling. Uh, When am I going to be in Glasgow again? And it's like, realistically, Mm -hmm. I will be. But, you know. Uh. (laughs) But it's the, the, what do you call it? The foreign, the exchange rate is different because it's to get there is going to cost you more. So you might as well have the experience when you're there. Exactly. That's like, that's my whole thought where I'm like, well, I'm not going to get here and then be cheap and not experience yeah. everything. So I, by the time I got to New York, I like, I was like out of money, <laughs> like really <laughs> super, super out of money. And I was in, so I was gone from LA for four months, still had my place sublet. I got back here in September, um, still had my place sublet. So I was staying with Nicole Amy Schreiber for a while, crashing in her mm-hmm. extra room. And when I got the offer for Jim Jeffrey's show, this is no exaggeration. I had six credit cards. First of all, again, place was sublet out. So I'm like not even paying rent. Uh-huh. Um, I had six credit cards that were completely maxed out. Oh like fully, God. like I couldn't put a dollar on them. Uh-huh. Uh, some of them were over. Uh, I owed a bunch of my friends money. Uh-huh. And I had less than $30 in the bank. Wow. I had like $26 or something and I was like, I, I don't know what, like at that point I'm like, I don't, I can't even apply for a restaurant job because I just need to win the lottery, you know? And it was, <laughs> it was so, I was in such a fucking fucked up financial situation that I, it took me like two months to get out from, it took me like the entirety of my staff run to get mm. out from underneath it and get like you know kind of get the ball rolling in a good way um but it's o- almost harkens back a little bit to the high school experience because I, when i hear that i mean like it is really scary to be in that debt and I, i'm like on that path, i think i freak out because i basically started this last year like taking out credit cards and i'm like mm-hmm. thinking about taking a personal loan because i feel i'm finally having more time to actually do things creatively and it is mm-hmm. paying off but just slowly you know and i realized like you what you did is really smart because I don't want to say, like, everyone should go out and get in debt if they don't have to, but what's mm-hmm. smart about it is that it didn't seem like there was another option in that situation, right? Like, if you yeah. had worked that restaurant day job, you might not have had the resources or time to be focusing as much on comedy or getting that staff job. It's like the resources were so, were so limited, you had to work with what hand you were dealt. And 
some of that's luck, you know, mm -hmm. you were able to have a good support to get through it. But the reality is like, you didn't do that because you were trying to cheat the system. Like, it yeah, sounds like exactly. if you had that rent money, if you had all that and you had the time, you would have just coasted and worked on the packets, you know, but like you did yeah. that because you had to. And so it paid off because the universe basically put you in the situation and be like, focus on had the shit. To. You did it. And then you like paid everyone back and did all the things. You didn't like say, yeah. haha, fuck you guys, you know? Exactly. And it's like, it's also, had I not just decided, fuck this, I'm leaving this restaurant job, mm -hmm. I might still be working there. Because like one of the things is I recorded my album, at that, that was 2019, I recorded my album in June. And that was a huge amount of my, I want to say like half of my income for last year, my sound exchange payments. And it's like, I wouldn't have gotten through last year with no fucking gigs without, I mean, it pays my rent every month, you know? And it, that was also the caveat to me. I've, I found this out later. I actually found this out really recently that that helped me get Jim Jeffrey's show because Jim mm. obviously is a stand up and uh, one of the other writers just happened to be in London when I recorded my album there. So I had him open my album oh. recording. And uh, shout out JJ Whitehead. Uh, he did a fucking excellent job opening, like setting the room and whatever. Um, but so JJ mentioned to Jim, like, oh, I opened her album recording in London and she did this huge tour and whatever. She booked it all herself. And so that was that was a big part of the caveat of why I got staffed on the show because Jim was like oh if she can fucking pull that off she can certainly handle a writer's room like no yes. problem and now I'm also opening for Jim which is like a fucking dream and it's like I, I like I mean who knows what would or could have been if I didn't do that but I'm like I can trace all of my success in the last couple of years back to just being like fuck it I'm done with mm -hmm. this and and I, to, to be totally candid like I had a couple of false starts before then where I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And then uh, it didn't really take off. But I, I think the 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 thing was is I was just like relentless. And I'm like, well, I'm going to try it again. Fuck it. And if this fails again, who cares? Like if, if I'd rather be broke and having fun and happy and traveling than be, you know, yeah. barely squeaking by and you know yeah because then what's the point i love that yeah. so much like literally i'm getting chills because <laughs> i love it, it it's so cool to hear like the beginning of that your high school story which the spirit is similar where you're like i want to mm -hmm. do this and you know i think in some sense like you you could tell that you were a very like thoughtful child it, you didn't go out of your way to put the blame on your parents for not being able to pay for this right you yeah. kind of knew that it wouldn't happen if you try to go about the following the rules almost like yeah it's also like i sort of got two free trips because my parents have never paid that's what and i mean like you yeah knew. like their big punishment is not giving me a printed version of my diploma mm -hmm. who cares i already went to college it doesn't matter if why am i doing right. my two middle fingers like i'm no. 15 but, no, but it's, <laughs> it's so like true, who gives it, a shit it really is like i feel like on some level whether you were conscious of it or not like you knew what you were very aware of like the the cards you were dealt and where mm -hmm. you wanted to be and mm -hmm. how to and the only way to get there is to kind of like cheat the system mm -hmm. but if had you been given a different hand like it's not i don't think mm -hmm. i mean who knows but like it sounds like when you have what it takes like it's based on your story of like giving to your friends when you have money like it doesn't sound like you would have lied to your parents if they were like wealthy billionaires you know what i mean like yeah yeah, it, yeah it's, exactly so it's a very i know it seems silly because it's like the law is a law but it's not like i think there is it's intention really not. and there is um motivation and for you you kind of like found this resilience where you're like well the system isn't working for me but i would thrive in the system if i was starting out with more privilege so let me just exactly. like get myself there and you did that again with your job and and i think that's really admirable and and even oh, when I hear you. that, I'm like, oh, I'm so scared. But like, that's giving me <laughs> like, I literally have a interview, like video interview at three for this like receptionist position at a dog daycare, which no, no, um, no shade to anybody who's mm -hmm. working day jobs. I've just also had a lot of false starts. And I, um, it gets had, frustrating, yeah. especially when you're working so hard and you're yeah. like, I, I, when you're like a self starter and you're like, I, I know the people succeeding around me are not working harder than me. Mm -hmm. And th that's not like any, that's not a commentary on them. It's just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why, why isn't this taking off for right. me? And I think like. Yeah. It's less about There's, them not deserving yeah. it and more about like, oh, I can see where the, the belief that like, 
if you just work hard, you'll get it is flawed because sometimes mm-hmm. there is luck and sometimes you have luck, sometimes you don't. And this is giving me a lot of like renewed hope because honestly, like, and I've never, I, can, I really don't share a lot of these kind of career downfalls because mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes, you know, it's com- in comedy, even though you want to be honest, like you just want to have this illusion that you're always doing well, you know, yeah. like, cause God forbid you don't get something. And then everyone's like, ew, like, oh, bad juju, cool. get away from me. And it's like, yuck, you've had, you've also had downfalls. What are yeah. you talking about? Like yesterday I literally got, cause I've been like sort of applying for some part-time just to see, um, but I'm kind of in that boat where I'm like, should I just say fuck it? And yesterday I heard back from one place I interviewed that I was like, oh, this is a sure thing. It's like front desk at this like senior home in Pasadena that I mm-hmm. went in and I was like, they love me, whatever. And I didn't get it. And then I also found out the same day I didn't get a rabbit. <laughs> I wanted to adopt. And it was, it was like three things in a row. I, there was another one. Um, oh, it was like a recruiter had reached out about a Netflix thing that was three months and I interviewed and then she was like, they went with someone else. But I found it all at once and I was like, what the no. fuck? Like I was like, even though I, none of those were the things I want to do. Well, the rabbit mm-hmm. I would like, but it's, Whatever. I, but if you're <laughs> crashing around with people, it's going to be a lot easier to not have the rabbit. Exactly. It almost felt just like the about. universe was kind of saying, mm-hmm. like, hey, just chill, man. Like, we have a plan. Can you stop mm-hmm. doing these stupid things and, like, making out your life harder? Yeah. Just, just chill out and we'll figure it out. So hearing that, like, what you just said, and then, like, putting that together with where I am, I'm like, I feel like, honestly, it really there is some sort of, like, divine timing to this. I, I think so. I mean, honestly, just fucking... I, that you're just reminding me also i had a dog briefly in 2018 briefly meaning for a week it, it was like I feel somebody like I in my neighborhood this. yeah somebody in my neighborhood found it they couldn't find the owner they're like i'm taking it to the pound and i was like i'll take oh. him and then like a week later this homeless lady pops up out of nowhere seemingly nowhere sees one of these posters and she's like that's my dog and I, so I gave it back and it was, it sucked. I mean, I cried so hard, even though it had only been a week. I was like, this is the fucking cutest dog. But I'm also, also, I will say so many people in LA were like, oh my God, I can't believe you're giving a dog to a homeless lady. And I'm like, it's her dog. It's her dog. Also, that's all she fucking has. Are you kidding me? You think I'm going to take it? Like, by the way, dogs don't want baths. Dogs don't (laughs) want kibble. They want to eat shit off the ground and they want to be filthy. probably enjoys its life more. Like, it probably gets to go eat whatever Absolutely. Absolutely. And he had one bath when I picked him up. And that's probably fine for a lifetime. Like, I fucking had dogs when I was a kid. We never bathed them. They were, like, outside. That is frustrating. It really bothers me when people... Because, I mean, I definitely grew up in the Bay where I'm not... Like, I was definitely indoctrinated with sort of, like, calling homeless people, like... Homeless people, like, they're not just Mm -hmm. people who right now don't have a... Like, literally describing maybe being on the road and renting out my place, I'm like, I would be technically homeless but I know that's not what people mean (laughs) right and and um when people say things like oh you know like say homeless people like this derogatory term it it does I don't know it's it's weird because I'm like it's bothers me because it's like what so you're implying that that this person can't care for another thing what if the circumstances like are different it's not that they couldn't care for themselves they like had some bad situation happen And maybe they'll get out of it, right? Things are temporary. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that, exactly. that you you disagree when people said that. But yeah, it's also it like, tough, realistically, yeah. everyone, dogs don't give a fucking shit. As long as you're not abusing them. Like, don't, don't ever abuse an animal. But, like, they don't care. My dog wishes I would leave her in the yard all day. She fucking <laughs> wishes. And, you know, like, she is so upset with me whenever she picks some shit up off the ground and I say drop it. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? This is food uh you know but it's like that's not i i don't know that's a whole no there's something interesting too like thing. caring for some, i mean this goes beyond just like housing but in general like when when we feel like our needs aren't met it, it can be really hard to provide for others but there is like a this like i feel like a gene or instinct that gets triggered when you do have to care for something yeah like mothers have this um but sometimes like i'll literally with my dog when I'm like panicking, having panic attacks and he has to pee, like it'll snap me out mm-hmm. of it and nothing else will. And I think there is some science to like having to just be aware of another form of life Absolutely. like around you can help improve your life. And yeah, they might, you know, it helps you get out of situations for yourself because you can see the way out for another thing. So you can see a way out for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that kind of folds back into like giving people money is it feels fucking so good to like help take care of people or animals or whatever and like i don't know i know you've 
I, I really do think this is kismet if you're uh-huh. thinking of just taking off and saying fuck it because it, it like I think that the the number one takeaway for me with the entertainment industry is like there's there's not really rules like there's rules but they're fake and like you you can't follow the rules if you want to succeed like you, you, just, yeah. you just can't like people don't when, want you to stay in the box it's like the jim jeffries thing like he's like she could yeah. do all this stuff because she did her own tour even though we're told like you're supposed to wait your turn in line you're supposed to get the showcases mm-hmm. you're supposed yeah. to then get the oh yeah the deals and then you get to go but it's like yeah actually if you do uh, when yourself, i told my manager like i was booking the tour i was like oh yeah i'm like planning this big tour of like europe and the uk and he was like why literally <laughs> that's what he said to me he goes why and i was like i don't even what what the fuck do you mean why? And I ended up like, you know, it's it's funny because I, I feel like industry people are so, they're like, oh, you were a staff writer. And I'm like, so was, a, so were a fucking million mm-hmm. people. Like not, not to take away, I'm like, that's, that is an accomplishment, but it's really, it's an accomplishment also winning the lottery, sure, realistically. Yeah. Um, well, it's based on their terms because the industry and, exactly. you know, and I love, uh, you know, the industry people I work with that I choose to work with. But there's a ton mm-hmm. of toxic people out there. And and and, you know, to be fair, the rep's job is to make you money. So, of course, they're just doing their job, too. But it's yeah, it is he's probably like, like, why are you going to spend two months not making money? For me? Right. <laughs> but like but. it is wild to be like they they only look at their like, oh, these are the showcases we made up. These are the awards we made up. Yeah. So when you get that, you're considered good. But then yeah, or they're like, here's the avenues you're supposed to take. Here's mm-hmm. here's the trajectory. You do a, a 15 minute for Comedy Central, and then you get your half hour and what. And I'm like, I'm gonna do none of that. And also, I'm like, I I don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks. I'm like, I'm most proud of that tour. Like I did 51 shows wow. in eight weeks in nine countries. Oh like my that's. Gosh. But I, I still don't know. I don't know how I pulled that off, like with travel and with with no money and no resources, like literally just internet. But <laughs> now you feel people. like you can do anything, right? The fact that Truly. you did something that you weren't sure going in if it would mm-hmm. succeed. Like, it's almost like you kind of know you're going to make it work no matter what, but you don't know how mm-hmm. yet. And then yeah. you come out of it and you're like, I did it. That must be yeah. so exhilarating to have that oh, confidence. Oh, completely. Completely. And it's like none of that, none of that would have taken place if I was like, well... I'm supposed to do X, Y, Z. I should. And it was like, it, it was truly like, I just, I could not stand waiting tables any longer. I'm like, I've been doing this for, at the time I was like, it had been 20 years. And I'm like, mm. it's, it, that's enough. That's plenty. I, I, I did it. I paid my dues, everyone, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but it's almost cool that you start, we started with the good confession that had to do with waiting tables because it comes full circle. Oh, yeah. That it's like every, mm-hmm. every choice you made in your life was the one you were supposed to make at the time like waiting tables when you were done with it you were done with it but Mm -hmm. you had you not done it at all you wouldn't have had that like nice connection with that couple so yeah it's sort of like it validates every moment even when it was a struggle you know yeah that's such a great way to look at it I love that I love oh. I love that it like unintentionally came full circle. Yeah, I feel like you really like I was like no narrative, but I was like, did you screw this? Like, <laughs> I can tell you. Hold a on, we had an arc. We, yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to end with a quick game. Ooh, um, yeah. Are, do you have time? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, this was just kind of a silly one, but um, since this is a confessions theme podcast. Um, this is called r slash forgiveness. Are you familiar with Reddit or do you spend time on Reddit? Obviously, I'm, you're I'm a staff completely writer. unfamiliar. Oh, I don't no. understand. Like, I look at Reddit and it looks like HTML to me. Okay. Or is it HTML? I don't, it might be. It's, it's, it's just not like, very pretty, it's confusing for my brain. Uh, well, Reddit, I mean, I'm sure you have spent time on it as a, a have yeah, writing I have in writer's it. rooms. But for people who don't, Spend a lot of time on it. There's a ton of subreddits. Um, I kind of consider it like the original metaverse. Like, black, I hate meta right now. But the idea that meta is new is stupid. Because basically on Reddit, you can find anything from, like, a whole community where people just share bees with top hats to, you know, euphoria <laughs> fan theories. Um, it's very cool in that sense, but also it's decentralized. But there is a subreddit that's pretty popular. It has about 3 million followers called r slash confessions and they say they're just a place where people can admit their wrongdoings um really i don't think there's any value out of it besides they just want to get off their chest maybe they want clout because i guess if you have a good enough confession people like it Mm -hmm. um but possibly they're looking for forgiveness so this game is called r slash forgiveness i'm going to give the power of forgiveness to you so in some sense Mm -hmm. you'll be like the mother father i don't know mother Mm -hmm. lisa let's call that I'll read a confession to you. This is not my confession, but I'll read it as if it's mine from this forum. And you decide whether you would forgive me 
if at all, and what my punishment or repentance should be if <laughs> I deserve one. Okay, pretty simple. All right, it. here's the first one. Um, this is from Alzanimo Keto 19. Okay. I lied to my vegan teacher. Oh, maybe I should start with this. Forgive me, mother. I have sinned. <laughs> I lied to my vegan teacher in eighth grade that the sandwich is vegan while it had mayonnaise. And the description is, um, in eighth grade, we had craft classes, and part of the project was to make sandwiches in groups of four and serve it to teachers and get graded for them. My group didn't do any prep work of pre-cutting the veggies, so I quickly made a sandwich with bread, mayo spread, lettuce, and a couple other veggies. It was supposed to only be vegetarian and vegan, and I fed it to all my vegetarian and vegan teachers. She loved the mayo sriracha hot sauce combo. She didn't know it had eggs, and I did confirm. Uh, so I confirmed it's pure vegan. Oh, she, I didn't confirm it's pure vegan, and we got good grades. Yeah, completely forgiven. I mean, I don't think you should. This was in this as, as a child. I yeah, I picked him. I picked silly ones because I do yeah. like that this person was hanging on to this for. Also, lady, <laughs> it, you know what? If you ate mayonnaise as a vegan and you didn't, I could tell you if something had mayonnaise in it. Okay, and I'm not a vegan, but if you if you <laughs> eat mayonnaise without knowing, like, who cares? She doesn't know, so she doesn't feel, like, morally fucked up over it, yeah, you know? Yeah, true. And that teacher probably was lying to herself, because I bet she knew. <laughs> yeah, she was probably like, you know what? I'm and also, what a weird mayonnaise. assignment. Make us food, and we'll grade you for it. <laughs> also, two, well, two things. It's weird that you have, like, kids making you food like they're yeah. your chef. So weird. Also, who the fuck wants to make what a, eat what a kid's making? Ew, Are you yeah, kidding me? No. <laughs> No, thank um, you. Okay, so I'm for I'm for we're forgiving we're forgiving this person Elzana me. No, no repentance needed. Yeah, no repentance <laughs> needed. All right, this is the next one um, from Gecko Blue Eight. Okay, so I stole a fellow student's candy in the first grade to punish them. So in first grade, I was a bit of a malicious brat. Okay, one day a friend in quotes had bought some candy and I asked her to share it. She refused. I didn't like being mm -hmm. told no, but it wasn't that big a deal until she acted like some kind of queen just for having candy. And then what frustrated me was she didn't eat it but was showing it off. So I stole it. I told um, I became an issue. She told the teacher they started looking for the culprit. I hid it in my clothes so they wouldn't find it in my bag. Apparently that candy was very important what i regret now that i'm older is the lack of empathy i had the girl cried that day and never had the same queen-like attitude from before yet at the same time i felt justified I, ha I felt i had the right to rectify her behavior i dislike who i was as a child and have since moved far from it <laughs> i'm gonna say the girl with the candy needs to repent actually <laughs> Why are you acting like a bitch because you have candy? Share it with yeah. your friends. First of all, secondly, I can't, I can't. I mean, stealing candy in like first grade or whatever. I, when I was in first grade, I used to beat the shit out of other kids. <laughs> Because and I'm like I thought I was helping the teacher. This is this is a thing. Like this oh is a total gosh. sidebar. But like, how I, Wait, how were you helping the teacher? <laughs> I could not understand why I was getting in trouble because like if somebody would act out in class, oh. I would just beat their ass and then the teacher would be like, Lisa, you know, and I would get in trouble. But I thought like, well, they're acting a fool and like obviously you're a teacher so you can't hit them so I was doing it oh for you is like what I thought but it was also confusing because I was also a straight A student and like in all these book clubs and stuff That's so they hilarious. were like what are you what's going on oh my god this wow I feel like I just got to know you so much better like that is hilarious there's so far be it for me to say somebody stealing candy oh should be punished there was a girl in my kindergarten class who was like like a bring candy her dad would always bring candy when he picked her up and she would like only have mm -hmm. a few pieces and always decide who made her like top group that day and no. like, hand them out and it was yeah she literally like a princess she would like be like you get a candy you get a, and it drove me insane um so yeah this story triggered me i agree with you 100 percent um in fact the, this, Ridiculous. this confessor probably is thinking way too much about this like they wrote way too much about empathy when like i, I don't mean know. again <laughs> Teresa, you say that but then like when i was in first grade you know like when you um <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> Uh, this is a little peek into how insane I am. Okay. Um, you know, like uh, when you've had like a Crayola crayon for a while and the wax is like really soft and smooth uh -huh. and you and then like the, the paper comes off and it's uh -huh. just like, oh, it's so perfect because uh -huh. it's not like sharp anymore. 
Um, I had a red crayon that was my favorite. And then I went up to the teacher's desk for something. And this kid, Ryan, who sat next to me, stole my red crayon. Uh. And I confronted him. And he he was like, no, I didn't, whatever. And I was like, I fucking know you did. Um, and I don't remember if I saw him with it or whatever it was, right? So this is first grade. Uh, fast forward to. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yesterday, no. <laughs> the year after we graduate, mm-hmm. we're at a bonfire at a mutual friend's house. I'm having a couple beers. And I was like, so Ryan <laughs> <laughs> fucking confronted him about it. Oh, my God. He was like, are you out of your fucking mind? What are you talking? What are you talking about? And I was like, I know you stole my crayon in Miss Gasparovic's class. And he's like, this is the most insane conversation I've ever had. Uh, haven't talked to him since that day. Uh, <laughs> oh, my but- God. Definitely confronted him 12 years later. That's hilarious. So, well, so everyone don't piss Lisa off. <laughs> she will hold a grudge. Um, well, here's the last one. Okay. <laughs> this one is questionable to me, but let's see what you think. Mm-hmm. You've been very forgiving today. Um, this was from Grin Grind 06. Okay. Um, I'll just read the confession and not the top. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one day in the third grade during recess, I really, and I mean really, had to take a shit. So like <laughs> anyone else would do, I sprinted my way to the bathroom and took the next available stall. However, there just happened to be another guy in the stall beside me, minding his own business and going on with his day. After I unloaded this <laughs> unholy shit, I had then noticed my stall was out of TP. I also noticed that the guy in the stall behind me just happened to have his shorts all the way off. So I proceeded to do what I thought my only option was and use his pair of shorts to wipe my ass the entire time he was re- repeatedly screaming give me my shorts back and i'm almost positive that in that moment he had no clue what my intentions were and just wanted his shorts back so he could go back to class or maybe he thought i was stealing them from him regardless after i finished absolutely ruining his shorts i had to find an escape route Meanwhile, this kid is still screaming at me to give his shorts back. My only option was to set them out of reach and sprint out of the bathroom in hopes he wouldn't be able to catch up to me. Since then, I have never spoken to this kid, but I hope he's doing all right. Oh, my God. (laughs) This is insane. Oh, my God. He's in third grade, so it's like... Like, But but I'm imagining an adult writing this. Like, (laughs) you know. I... Uh, sir, you could have just asked for toilet paper. You, could, sir, you could have stayed in there all day. You could have internalized this. I think this requires repenting, and and repenting in the form of like, make sure you're covering this man's therapy for a year because I I promise you he has some deep deep like uncovered trauma from that. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I didn't even realize that. If you can steal shorts, you could steal toilet paper. If you're willing to run out and hide the shorts, you're Run yeah, or like stall. wait for him to leave and crawl <laughs> under the stall and get the toilet paper. What are you doing, oh man? Oh my god, yeah. I bet he could find him. I mean, how many people does this happen to? Just find the one guy who's out there telling the story of how someone smeared poop all over his shorts in third grade. <laughs> Oh, wow. okay. Well, wow. there you have it. Uh, this guy is a sinner and needs to repent. Um, thank you so much, Lisa, for playing and for being on this thank pod. Thank you. This was so fun. Yeah. Where can people follow you, find you, get your album, share anything you would like to share? Ooh, yes. Please uh, please follow me on Instagram at Olympian Lisa Curry so I can get repped for fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> My album, Alive for a While, is it's streaming on everything. It's available on Bandcamp if you want the money to go to me. And my show, Long Story Long, airs on Sirius XM's She's So Funny every Thursday at noon and 8 p.m. Eastern. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. You. you can follow this podcast at Tell Me Anything Pod on Instagram and follow me at Teresa Lee Bot on Instagram and TikTok. Bye. Thank you for listening to You Can Tell Me Anything. You Can Tell Me Anything is a comedic podcast created and produced by Teresa Lee on the Hoo Ha Ha Podcast Network. The Hoo Ha Ha team is Ashley McAtee, Audrey Povar, Maggie Ruth Austin, Cardi Assad, and Stephanie Binot. The theme song for this podcast was created by Cody Johnston. The outro music was written by Shipwrecked Sailor. And the Hoo Ha Ha app can be found in the Apple Store to stream your favorite comedy series and laugh out loud podcasts by the funniest woman in comedy. To contact this podcast specifically, you can email tellmeanythingpod at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram at tellmeanythingpod. Thank you.